Hello all and welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Uh, I'm going to have a discussion today in regards to one of my favorite topics, a uh, topic that I don't think is really discussed enough, especially in the media, and that topic is known as generational wealth. Now, everybody has their own little rendition and examples of what generational wealth is, but I'm going to go back to the old school on you all in regards to generational wealth, um, to the, the generational wealth that former slaves had um, once they put their money together, the generational wealth of uh, immigrants that immigrated to the United States of America, put their money together, established real communities, not neighborhoods, um, and was able to pass things down from generation to generation. And this, this subject matter came to me because in regards to, I had to take a trip up to the Northeast. So if you think of the part of the United States where you got New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, that, that little circle right there, um, where you have people that bought homes, had businesses, and they was able to pass down those homes and businesses to their children. Because um, a lot of people that I know, when they got out of high school, you know, or got out of college, they had to do the normal thing of going to get a job. Nothing wrong with that. But just imagine, because I've I had discussions with multiple um, homeowners and store store owners graduating from high school, and your mother, father, or both parents say, "Here, son. Here, daughter. Here's a business." This business generates this amount of money. You grew up in this business. You've helped support this business. Um, we're going to retire and go down to Florida or the Carolinas or Georgia, wherever have you. We're tired of the cold weather. We're getting older. We want some sunshine and palm trees and, and cheap living in our life. So here's a, here's a business and here's a home with no mortgage on it. All you have to worry about is paying the personal property taxes, keeping upkeep on it, and paying the utilities. Now I know about you all. But that sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> so I, I leave it at that. It just like I said, just put that in your mind. 18 years old or 21, 22 years old, getting out of getting out of college, you know, because most people, when they get out of you know high school, they either go to college, they go to the military, they go to some sort of trade school. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are usually the normal options that people have and they have to start from scratch. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, just think of the mind frame. Now, a lot of people look at it as. Well, you're spoiling people if you just give it to them. I said no. If they, if you're trying to keep something, an uh, asset because a house is that you own is an asset, a business that you own is an asset. You're trying to keep it within the family. Then I don't see as you um, spoiling anybody. I think I, I give. I see it as you passing down an asset to your generation. You know. Now I'm not a parent, but I would imagine most parents out there would not mind being able to give the children out there that's sort of a hand up and not a hand out. You know, a hand out is just, here's a million dollars, go splurge and do whatever the heck you want to do with it. Handing over a home and a business is a responsibility. Now, depending on who the, the, the kid is, it's a big responsibility and not all people are ready for that responsibility. Some people don't want to own a home or some people don't want to own a business. But I'm just saying the mindset of generations, because that in a sense is wealth because you're teaching your child to not have to work for somebody. You're teaching your child how to be an owner. You know, so that's, that, that saying from Andre Hatchett and Dr. Royce Watkins, own to be owned, you know, and they own the properties. Therefore, they have more say of how the properties manage, whether it's the house or the business, you know. Um, and I have a lot of great stories, uh, two great stories to bring along with this. But I just find that very fascinating because most people I know, even, you know, including myself, they don't have that luxury when they or didn't have that luxury when they got out of high school. They had to go to the military, go to college. And, you know, which is great, you know, especially a lot of people want to serve your country. It's Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for your service. Definitely would never downplay that. I'm just saying options because I'm all about having options and not just being stuck on one path. So a uh, great, great example of a um, friend of mine that I went to um, high school with. We'll call her Kim. I'm not going to put a real name out there. Kim's family owned a restaurant. Um, and matter of fact, um, I'm saying not uh, the person I used to, well, not high school, the person I used to work with. Sorry, I got it mixed up. But anyways, um, her family owned a uh, restaurant. Matter of fact, two restaurants up in the Massachusetts area. And um, she moved down here for a little bit to work um, after she got out of college and whatnot. I worked for her for a little bit, but she told me the story. And, I, and the story, it's like it's 10 years old, but it's stuck with me to this day. So she, she gets out of high school. She has a um, chance to go to college. 
she goes and she didn't have to go. It was an option to go because the family owns two restaurants, two successful businesses. And her parents wanted to handle one of the restaurants. Um, and then, and, and then as soon as she got um, real familiarized with the business and working it in an effective and efficient manner, you know, they were going to hand off both of the businesses to her. But she's been working in the restaurants since she could walk and talk and for the most part. So she knows the family business, the ins and outs of the family business. Um, excuse me. Uh, and that, and to me, that's a, that's a great thing. And then the, another thing is knowing the ins and outs of the family business. They're like, okay, well, you got the good business street smarts, but we want you to get some business book smarts. So why don't you go to college, get a business management degree, so in order for you to become a more an intelligent, knowledgeable manager, you already got the hands-on experience, but now we need you to get the book experience. So she did that. She worked a regular job for like two years. And then she said to herself, why am I getting up at this time of morning and killing myself for something? And I have this, these two beautiful businesses waiting for me back home. She didn't really like the DMV area that much. She missed her family. So she went back home. Ended up running, running one of the restaurants. Did a great job. Did it for three years. And then by that time, her parents were done. And were like, hey, we're moving to um, Georgia. Yeah, it was Georgia. Uh, and that was back during the time period where a lot of people started to move down to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, beautiful city, never been there, definitely got to go. But everybody started going to Atlanta, Georgia, um, and so they're like, hey, look, you're running the businesses in a great, effective manner. We just want a certain cut um, every month and whatnot from the business. It's in all of our names. It's still a joint family co-op. Why don't we go for it? And um, she did it, which is the uh, one awesome thing, but the better thing that comes along with it is not only was the house because they sold, they they didn't even sell the house. They just said, "Hey, here you go, Kim. Here's here's the house. Just pay pay the property taxes on it, pay the utilities. It's yours." So she went from paying in the DMV area fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars to live in Alexandria, Arlington, Virginia, for, to paying six hundred to eight hundred dollars a month for a house that's in her name, no mortgage. All she has to do is pay the property taxes and the utilities. Now, I know what you're going to say. Property taxes are very high in states like Massachusetts, and I get it. But, you know, with the amount of money I just stated, what she was paying in rent, that she's going to pay for a house that she's already owned without having the bank involved, uh, she's saving a lot of money, one. And then, two, she's not working for somebody, so she's a business owner. So she's getting uh, lots of tax write-offs for both buildings. And, by the way... The plus side to it is a family bought the two buildings from the previous owners um, a long time ago, and they paid off one of the buildings, and they were halfway um, there paying off the other half of the building, and they were actually subletting apartments um, in one of the buildings at the same time. So to me, I just hear ching, 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 ching. I think it's a great thing. I mean, and that gave Kim options. He had So when she left college, she had the option to work a job. She did it, didn't like it. Went back home to work the family business, loved it, and her parents left it with great assets, okay, property, businesses, beautiful thing, and it, it ended up working out in a great way, and um, she didn't, and the, and the kicker is, she was able to do this without having to worry about getting a bank loan, she didn't have to worry about getting in the loads of student loan debts because her parents already put away a good college fund for her. I know not everybody can do that, but you get the point where I'm going at. She was ahead of the game compared to most people getting out of high school and getting out of college. She didn't have the mountains of student loan debts. She wasn't working a job that she hated. And she was able to see what life was like from the inside of the family and the outside of the family. And then she was able to make the conscientious decision for her to run the business and keep the family name going. And I remember she ended up getting married. She has about two two kids yeah she has two children and she's a very happy person and she's hoping that she can hand down the family restaurant and the family um house when she when her kids get older one you know at least for one of them to keep this great trend going and that way they're continuously you know putting more money away than they are spending and the huge amounts of money that they're spending they're spending it on assets that's making them money on a weekly daily and monthly basis you know um and i and i always say you don't hear more stories like that because you have a lot of children and I've spoken about this with many people that when they grow up, they don't even want it. And I get it. Everybody has their own path. I get it. But the sad thing is a lot of time is 
when the majority of you have your own path, then the majority of you, in a sense, end up starting off at square one. And it, for me, it's just like, hey, if I could start off at square 10 instead of one, then, hey, I'm going with 10. And if I don't like it, then I could always go back to one. But at least I have some change in my pocket, some skill set, some contacts, some real world experience under my belt before I decide to leave the family business and go work for somebody else or go start my own business. You know, it's like you could you can continue this path, but do it with another business. You might not like the restaurant business, so you say to yourself, "Hey, I want to open up a retail store, or I want to open up an online business." You know, you but it's putting you on the path of having great options. I'm all about having options. Raise your kids to have great options. I was raised like that, and I love it, and I have options, and I continuously to go towards those options and those dreams because being stuck in just one place, one job, one career field, sometimes depending on the situation, but for me. Is boring, but that's just my personal opinion. All right, so moving on to the next story is another one. Uh, another um, a friend of mine that somebody I actually grew up with, and we'll name call him. Excuse me, we'll call him Jason. Um, Jason, actually, real nice guy, real laid back. Mel, you never would even thought that he his family had the amount of money and assets that they have because they just weren't uh, people that like to brag a lot. And I love, I love hardworking, successful, humble people because a lot of times people forget that humble part and they just like having the noses in the air like there's something special. And I'm like, yeah, you're just a regular person like the rest of us. Let's just find a way to do better in life and move on. But another story, I digress. So Jason's family owned at least 10 to 15 McDonald's throughout the United States of America. Okay, now if you, anybody knows whether you like the food at McDonald's is irrelevant. McDonald's is a make money making franchise. That's why it costs so much for one. I believe it's a hundred thousand dollars for you to even buy into the franchise. You know, so it's a money making machine. And Jason was raised by his father and mother. You know, but he had a real close relationship with his grandfather. Now Jason was um, close with his grandfather. He was close with his father. And they both taught him two different things from two different principles because Jason's father obviously wanted him to join the family business and continuously buy more franchises, make more money, become owners, et cetera, and so forth. But Jason's grandfather, his relationship with his grandfather, and they were like this. His grandfather was a retired army, um, yeah, it was an army, retired army colonel, and his, and his grandfather actually retired, um, was a Vietnam War veteran. Uh, thank him for his service. Um, yeah, retired, retired army colonel. He spent 30 years in the army and, uh, he loved, Jason loved hearing the war stories from his uh, grandfather during the uh, Vietnam era to uh, him, his time of meeting with different presidents, um, and all that good stuff. So Jason was kind of torn. It was, he felt like it was a complex situation because by the time he graduated high school, his dad's like, okay, I want you to go to college. Um, get a business degree or get something, get whatever degree you want, but I want you to join the family business. Jason was like, dad, I want to join the family business. However, uh, I still want to join the army. It's a, it's a, it's a dream of mine to join the military. I want to serve my country. I said, Hey, that's, you should be commended for it. And Jason's dad was a little upset about it. However, Jason's dad's like, look, let's have a compromise. Why don't you join the army national guard? And um, that way you can, you know, do your do your civil service, your country service for your country, but you can still um, go to McDonald's University. Um, I help you run a franchise, you know, set up a franchise. If you don't like it, I'll end up selling it off. And, you know, you could just actually go active duty in the military and you can do it more on a full time basis. Figure out which passion you love. Well, Jason did it five to ten years later. Uh, Jason is a captain in the Army. Uh, National uh, Guard. He's loving life. He owns two fr McDonald's franchises and he's thinking to open up a third one. And by the way, he's not only married with one child, but the woman he ended up marrying, she was um, became one of his regional managers. Uh, he um, actually hired her, and then three years later, they ended up getting married and starting a family. So, and to me, it's like, hey, if you have your own business, it's smart to keep it in the family. You know what I mean? <laughs> because then you guys are always going to speak the same language. Now, if you get a divorce, and you know that language might deteriorate, that's another story. But you know, for this situation, uh, they ended up having a nice, uh, great marriage, and they're still married to this day, owning businesses. He does his time in the service. Him and his grandfather uh, have a great rapport. His grandfather helps him with his military career. His dad helps him with his uh, franchising um, business. And it's a win-win situation. But 
the, the significance and the moral of the story is of this. In the game of capitalism, the wonderful game of capitalism in one of the greatest countries on earth is this. You got to play, and when you play, you got to play to win. And a lot of people, and the one thing I love about a lot of immigrants in the United States is they come here with that mentality. You know, people look down on that mentality. I remember I did a video called Immigrant Hustle versus American Hustle, where you have a lot of immigrants having 15 to 20 people living up in a house, but they have ended up having three to five different businesses and whatnot, and then owning three to five different homes. You know, they're putting their money together. They're creating generational wealth, and they can pass things down from businesses to homes. You can hate on it all you want to. I commend it. And I and, they, and it's families back during the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, the Great Depression era, baby boomer area, um, the whole not era, the whole nine. People had that togetherness, collective cohesiveness mentality. Let's do it together. And those old school fashion principles, to me, still apply to this day if you do it right. But a lot of people are so busy with this me society self-absorbed society that they think they're too good to do stuff like this and this is why a lot of times you end up being left behind by people that come from all other countries because they just look at the world in a different uh, matter and, and a different manner and they're able to do things in a much more effective way because they have the patience the power the knowledge and the know-how and the determination and when you put all those things together nobody can be stopped at least and if they are at least they die trying so Anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my page, Larry's Anything Goes, on Facebook. Please subscribe to my website, uh, Larry's Anything Goes. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the um, website in the caption below. And please please subscribe to my YouTube page. And uh, it's actually, actually a little fun doing a video with my sunglasses on. Uh, I saw one guy do it on YouTube. And I was like, hey, that guy looks pretty cool. So let me do something different. So... Hope you guys liked it. Have a great holiday weekend. And once again, vets and current members in the military, thank you for your service.